for Carol Rosenblum had traded wisely to get top quarterback John Hadel. Tight end Pat Curran, number 88, added another touchdown. John Hadel then fired to number 30, Lawrence McCutcheon, and wrapped up a strong 23-13 opening victory. John Hadel, in his second week at the helm, had taken full command under offensive coach Ken Meyer, and he laced the air with long, accurate passes which tied the Atlanta secondary in knots. Harold Jackson, number 29, caught this one out of bounds, but made up for it soon thereafter, and the Rams were on the way. His stinger to Jack Snow helped put 31 points on the board as the Rams made it two for two. John Hadle and Harold Jackson were just beginning to fine-tune their partnership, which wrapped up San Francisco 40 to 20. Returning to the air, Hadle hit a wide open Harold Jackson and the game was on ice. Meanwhile, John Hadle swamped the Oilers with three touchdown strikes as the Rams remained unbeaten 31 to 26. With the game under control and all the time in the world to throw, Hadle unloaded a 69 yard shot to Jackson who streaked in to make it 28 to 12. While Houston had been a moment scare, coming up was another Texas twister, a more exacting test for the Los Angeles victory string. The tough 40-man Dallas team found one man they couldn't handle. His seven receptions for 238 yards were augmented by ferocious blocking and fastidious pass pocket protection. All day, Harold sped wide open and free, while the Cowboys searched desperately for a way to lasso him, but found none. When Harold scored his fourth touchdown of the first half, it was a proud moment for both him and receiver coach Lee Bennett, because it tied the Rams' team record. Even more importantly, it gave the Rams a joyous 37-31 victory over one of their toughest opponents and brought their record to 5-0. And when Green Bay invaded the Coliseum, all signals were go, and Jack Snow made an excellent end zone grab. Then John Hadle and Harold Jackson kept their game and power glide with another effortless score. It was a day that every receiver dreams about, and it propelled Harold Jackson to national recognition as a Harold's performance against the Cowboys was not a one-shot affair because throughout the year he blazed wide open and hung toughly elusive, finishing with 13 touchdown receptions. Double coverage might have been one way to stifle Harold, but with a man like number 84, Jack Snow, as the other flanker, that play was impossible, and some of Harold's success must be attributed to Snow. Through the first six wins, John Hadle had proved to be a magnificent field general. But John Hadle to number 84, Jack Snow, finally got Los Angeles trucking. Snow has been used sparingly this year, but on only three receptions, he came up with 60 of Hadle's 221 passing yards last week. Hadle to multi-purpose back Jim Bertelson moved Los Angeles into position for another score. He kept the Rams one game ahead of the hard-charging Falcons in the NFC West. On offense, Knox has former Charger John Hadle at quarterback, and Hadle leads the NFL in passing thus far this season, having completed an astounding 80% of his passes. An MVP John Hadle and All-Pro Harold Jackson had a magnificent obsession for touchdowns. Their three hookups rang in the 31-13 victory, but for the 49ers, the ringing was the death knell. They had not won in 12 of their last 13 games with the Rams. The passing game clicked as well.
John Hadle to number 80, Bob Klein, helped roll up 24 points. And repeatedly, they scorched into the end zone. Carol Rosenblum had traded wisely to get top quarterback John Hadle. 